Hello everyone. In this tutorial video, I'm going to explain what is default parameter value. This is a UDF or user-defined parameter with an automatic value if omitted as an argument. But before I discuss completely this, please support the channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hit also the notification bell so that you will be notified with all the new videos that I'm going to upload in this channel. And so, what is default parameter value? Like I said, it is a user-defined parameter or a parameter that you put or you place in a user-defined function. And this parameter will have an automatic value if you omitted it as an argument. So that is the meaning of the default parameter value. When omitted, there will be an automatic value for it. To give you an example of this so that it will be more clearer, okay, let's have an example here. Let's call the function as number. Okay, so we will have our, what we're going to do here, we will have an argument here, only one argument. When we define now this number function, it will have a default parameter. Okay, so let's call it as, for instance, the default parameter will be n is equal to, let's say, 100. Okay, so we may omit this space or spaces there. So something like this. Okay, so this simply means that if number is called, okay, and it is omitted, the argument is omitted, then the default value will be 100. So if I will call the function here as something like this in line number 9, that means when it goes here in the function number, the, de the definition of number function, the value of n is 100. If you place the argument 10, all right, for instance here 10, the value of n is 10. But if you did not place it, for instance here in line number 9, so the value of n is 100. So still, there is still one parameter. Okay, so if, it, if omitted as argument here. So that is the meaning of the default. From the word itself, default, that means automatic value. So for instance here, it is omitted. So when it goes here in the definition of the function, it will have an automatic value and that is the 100. Okay, so let us try to print that one. Let's say print, let's say I'm going just going to print value. Okay, so as you can see, so it is just a simple function that will print the argument. And so when we run it, let's try to test it. And so therefore, it is like this. You see, when we call it here, right? So it went here, number four, line number four, it will process here. And so since there is an argument here, which is 10, so the value of n is 10, not 100, because it will take the argument 10. Again, this one would simply means that if the n or if the argument is missing or the you did not place it, so the value of n is 100. That's the meaning of this, as simple as that. But because we have 10 here, and so when it goes here in line number 4, the value of n is 10, and it will print 10. Okay, so as you can see, it went here. I mean, it printed here 10. Now, when it returned back here in 9, okay, that's it. That's the end. So it will now go to... 10, line number 10, so number. 
So you're calling again the number function. So this time there is no argument. Okay, but because the definition of the number, okay, will have a default value of n equal 100, that means even if you did not place an argument here, so the value of number, okay, the n, all right, the n in the number function, so it will be 100. And print n, it will give you 100. So it will print 100 as you can see here. So very simply, when it is omitted, the value of that argument will be this one here, 100. Okay, so simple as that. I'm going to give you another example. Here, it is only one argument. No? So what if it is multiple arguments, meaning to say many arguments? Okay, so let's have uh, an, another example of that. Let's say I'm going to call a function. Let's call it prices. Okay, so we will put many prices here. For instance, uh, 150. Uh, let's say let's have another one 150 okay another one will be let's say 40 okay so let's have four arguments okay the fourth one the fourth one is or will have a default value so our last here is 40 okay so if we omit if we did not place the last one, the fourth one, then it will have an automatic value. That is what we're trying to design here. Okay. So we will have three and the fourth one is default. Meaning it will have an automatic value if you did not put or place the fourth argument. That is what we're trying to design. So it will always be four arguments and the last will be default if you did not place the fourth one okay so let's have that one let's create the definition so def prices we will just print the prices all right so call it here so the first price so let's call it price one price two price three and price four and if it is omitted, the price for is zero. Okay. But if it is not omitted, then it will take whatever is that fourth that you put or you place. Okay. So let's, we will just print these values. Okay. So just to make it simple, we will just print. So print P1. Oops. All right. So, 2 here, 3 here, 4 here. So, let's just make simple our, our function definition. We will just pass, okay, we will just pass arguments and then we will just print those arguments here in the function as simple as this. Uh, nothing it will do, just simply to print those prices. Okay, so before we run, I'm just going to remove this number here, okay, so that it will not execute this. Okay. So we are just going to focus on running this prices function. Okay, so that's why we omitted this two function here, function call. So let's try to run now. So as you can see, it printed 150. 150 and 40 okay because those are the arguments here and based on the definition of our prices it will just print those prices so as you can see we have four parameters here so p will take 100 p2 will take 50 okay p3 will take 150 and p4 because we have a fourth one here so P4 will take 40, okay, because we have the fourth parameter here or fourth argument here, okay, and so P4 will take that 40. Now, if you did not place the 40 here or you did not place the 
fourth argument here. So the value of P4 now will be 0. As simple as that. When it is not there, it will take the default value. When it is there, it will not take the default value. It will take the fourth argument or the last argument because it's the last. Okay? So that's how it is. That's how it works. Okay, and so therefore, if we will, if we will continue now, uh, the function of the prices, so it will print P1, P2, P3, P4. Let's try to call the function again, but this time without the fourth argument. And so we are expecting when we run this program, we are expecting this four, and then because we will call it again. It will print 150 and 150 and 0. So let's try to run it now. So it is something like this now. So as you can see. So we have here 100, 50, 150, and 40. So that's the first function call. The second function call, as you can see, line 15. When it called again, prices function, so this time it will print 100, 50, 150, and 0. Because the fourth argument is not there. So therefore, the fourth argument will be 0 here as the parameter here in when you call now the function prices. Okay, so as simple as that. When it is not there, it will take the default value, which is 0. Okay, as you can see in line 15, the fourth argument is not there. So it will take P4 as 0. So the value of P4 is 0. When it is there, it will take the value of the argument. So therefore, here in line 14, the fourth argument is there, 40. So therefore, the fourth parameter will take that argument fourth argument so and that is 40 so the value of p4 here is 40 as simple as that okay so another thing that you need to consider is that the default parameter should be always in the last here you cannot place a default parameter in the beginning or in the middle or in this case third parameter it cannot be like that it will always be in the last okay so when you design your function with default value so that default value should be always in the last so that parameter will always be in the last with a default value okay so just remember always that okay so let us have another example. This time, string values. Let's say, okay, I'm going to remove this two again here so that we are focused on that new function we're going to create. Let's say um, orders, orders function. So this orders function, I'm just going to put three arguments. Okay, the last argument will become the default parameter when we call the orders function. So in the definition, it will become the default, the last argument. Okay, so we will have three arguments only. Let's say the first order is pizza. The second order is, let's say, uh, let's say chicken. Or let's just have uh, fries. All right. And the last will be drinks. For instance, let's say, let's have it something like a Pepsi. Okay, so, so we have three orders here. Pizza, price, and Pepsi. However, we want to make the last argument, this one here, to be default value. It will have a default value. If I did not place the order here for drinks, let's say, let's call it this one as drinks, then an automatic value will be, let's say, water. Okay, but if I put anything here, okay, as the drinks 
or the third argument, then that is the value for the third parameter. Okay, so in short, let's just make this as default. Okay, so when we define now, when we define now our function, so it will be like this, orders, open and close. Okay, so I'm going to say order one, order two, let's just make it like this. Of course, you can place your own parameter variables here. No? So I'm just going to call it for this one as order one, order two, and order three. The order three is a default parameter. So I'm just going to say here, water. So as simple as this. Okay. So when the third argument here is missing or you did not place it, the automatic value of order three is water. But if you place it like this, Pepsi, so the value of order three is Pepsi. As simple as that. So nothing is uh, very confusing here. It's as simple as that. And then I'm just going to print. Okay, so I'm just going to print. Let's just make it simple. Of course, you can put anything inside the body of a function. But for this discussion, to make it more simple only, so I'm just going to print. Print order two and print order oops order three simple as this okay so when we try to run now okay so as you can see it printed pizza fries and pepsi okay so because the third argument is there so it will take pepsi now if you will remove okay again if you will remove Let's say I'm just going to have another one. So if you will remove that third argument, so what will happen is that the value for the third argument is water. All right. So still there are three parameters here, but the third one is default. If it is not there, then it will take water. The value for order three is water. So when we run this, since we have two call, no, we we called the orders two times. So it will print first pizza, fries, and Pepsi based on the definition of our orders function, and then the second call to the orders function, it will just print pizza, fries, and water. That is what we are expecting. So let us run it now. And so as you can see, pizza, fries, Pepsi. That's the first call, line number 19, line 20. So we have only two arguments here. So it will print pizza, fries, and water. Because, why water? Again, because we did not place any third argument here. So therefore, in the parameter here, when we call the orders function, it will take water. Because water is a default parameter value. Okay, so that's how it works for the default parameter value. As simple as that. When it is not there, it will take the default value that you place when you define the function. Okay, so, and again, if you will look at our examples here, these are functions that are not returning anything, no? So they are not returning anything. So these are what we call void functions. However, they are void functions with parameters. Okay, so you're calling the function with parameters. You're calling the function with arguments. And when it is executed, definitely it will have parameters, as you can see here. But it doesn't return a value. Question is, is it possible with the return value? Yes, of course, it is possible. To have a return value but our examples here doesn't have a return value okay so as simple as that so you can have a return value here so all you need to do is to specify the return value okay so so let's have an example of that okay so let's have this here and here so this time we will 
have a function with default value and it can return a value because what we have here the examples here are functions without return value or values let's have something like let's call the function as my numbers okay so it will have three arguments let's say 20 50 and another number here 15 so let's make this last argument to be default value in the definition of our function and so let's define now the function okay so i'm going to say here def my numbers oops my numbers open and close okay let's call the first argument to be n1 then followed by n2 then followed by n3 okay so simple as this okay however our n3 should be having a default value let's say the default value will be let's say zero it's not always zero we can have any default value here okay so let's just make it zero okay again default values should be placed as the last if you have multiple or more than one parameters okay it should be the last one the function that we're going to design is simply to return the sum of the parameters okay sum of the three arguments okay let's make it simple like this so we will have a function that will have a default value and it can return a value and then that value will be the sum of the three numbers that you pass as arg arguments or as parameters here inside the definition of the function so let's call it n1 plus n2 plus n3 there you go and then i'm just going to return the value of s okay because our previous example doesn't have return value okay so it is possible to have something like this also we have a default value and it can also return and since we are returning the s so i'm just going to say here let's say d sum is equal to my numbers so it's like this so if we will print now the value of d sum then all right that's it so we should have a value when we run this program okay when we run this one with a function so it should have a value of 20 plus 50 plus that should be 85 right it should be returning 85 it should be printing the 85 let's run it now there you go it's 85 so as you can see here okay if we will remove the last argument therefore the value of that last argument will be zero all right because according to the definition of my numbers we should have one two three arguments but the third argument is missing or did you did not place it so the value of that third argument it will become the third parameter here in the definition of the function it will be zero so that means when we run this one now we should have 70 as our sum right so let's call it here let's run and so it's now 70 so as simple as that no so that's the default parameter values very simply if you did not place it as an argument when you call the function okay that function will have the same number of parameters but the last one okay the last one will be having a default value and so that covers our topic here as simple as that default parameter value i hope you have learned how to use this default parameter value okay it's only very easy again always remember it should be in the last okay if you have multiple parameters 
or multiple arguments, it should be in the list. Okay? So if you have comments or questions about this topic, please write it in the comment section below and I will be glad to answer your comment or question. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on my next video.